We have to do something about it. And of course, we have to save the planet from systemic white supremacy as well. And we have to save the planet from capitalism. Those three things, believe it or not, come under the umbrella of ESG. We are saving the planet from climate change, which includes the zombie fungus. We are saving the planet from systemic white supremacy, which is in, in a virus that has infected every single element of Western civilization. And then we're going to save the planet from capitalism, E, environmental, S, social, G, governance. This is the strategy by which our retirement dollars are being invested, which is absolutely astonishing. Kate Spitz is standing by from the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty because Will has brought a suit on behalf of retirement investors. What's going on? How can Will affect what is obviously the harnessing of asset management that we can't touch to promote oh, afternoon. to promote social and political ideologies? Good to have you, Kate. Thank you for having me, Vicki. Uh, it's good to be here with you today. Uh, so as you mentioned, we uh, brought our lawsuit this morning. It's actually our seventh lawsuit against the Biden administration, and we are challenging Uh, the Department of Labor's federal rule, which affects 140 million-plus American workers who have retirement plans. If you have a 401k, this affects you. And what the new rule from the Department of Labor uh, would allow fiduciaries who are in charge of making investment decisions to do is to weigh these ESG, or environmental, social, and governance factors, rather than focusing on maximizing the return uh, on our accounts so that we have funds available as a steady stream for retirement. Wow. Uh, I mean, think about what that means, that your asset man. Now, most of us have some kind of asset management of our 401ks, uh, and almost all of them are are trying to slide your retirement investment dollars into woke companies. This is woke capitalism, by the way. This is this is another way to describe ESG. Um, but you've got the Biden administration saying that nobody's going to be in violation of fiduciary responsibilities if they put woke investment that minimizes your return on investment over the return on your investment itself. Because ESG funds have lost anywhere between 11 and 28 percent last year. Well, you're absolutely right, Vicki. A lot of these ESG investments have been unproven, uh, to say the least. And more so than that, uh, our retirement accounts uh, are not supposed to be politicized. Uh, that is a major underlying issue. Retirement funds uh, for the American people are something that unites over half the workforce. As I mentioned, over 140 million of us. Uh, our participants are beneficiaries in one of these plans. And certainly not all of the 140 million plus, uh, including I would imagine most of your listening audience, are, would not be on board uh, with investing on that basis rather than investing for return. And so that's why we believe that the Biden rule is unlawful and we are challenging it in federal court. It doesn't end ESG, but it ends the, the free pass that anybody would get for losing money in your using your money to lose money in order to promote woke politics. Um, Because, again, you know, ESG is being fought on a number of different fronts. This is the first time I've seen anyone challenge the Biden rule on this. But you're you're messing with people's dollars. But it almost seems like the Biden administration said, how do we get our hands on the cumulative value of middle America's retirement? Because they're not just going to turn it over to us. Darn it. We're not just going to be able to transfer their 401ks to government savings accounts and fleece these people. How can we go in a roundabout way to fleece these people and utilize their resources to invest in our politics? That's what it seems like is happening to me. And this would gut the power of the middle class voter, because at the end of the day, their money is what makes them a a, uh, a voting block to be reckoned with. I would agree with that, Vicki. I mean, when uh, fiduciaries decide where to invest, they're supposed to make those decisions to maximize value for retirement. It's not supposed to be used to fund a progressive wish list or to virtue signal with someone else's money. They shouldn't be able to go and virtue signal with uh, your retirement account and mine in order to uh, feel good about certain policies that they may prefer that many of us uh, are not supporting. 
it, so the D, the uh, E is environmental. That's climate change. That is investing in companies that would take away our natural gas stoves and our natural gas furnaces and make the energy, the cost of providing energy, expensive and intermittent. Just I'm just going to describe this for you. The S, that's DEI. That's diversity, equity, and inclusion. You've got another Biden rule where he said every single agency decision now, which would you know presumably include all the financial agencies, all the environmental agencies, all of the labor agencies, anything that has to do with you know policies, regulations that would affect us. Now all of that has to take into consideration white supremacy and equity, and then you've got governance, and it seems to me. That all governance is about taking away representative government and obliterating the concept of global capitalism. Uh, So if that, in fact, is the case, then they're using my money to eventually take my money. Well, Vicki, these, these ESG factors, as you point out, uh, they are, they're certainly more on the policy side, as you've described. And uh, going through that way, uh, I think the Biden administration needs a bit of a civics lesson. Uh, Congress, if, if we're going to have a change in environmental policy the way that these folks want, Congress passes the laws and the president signs them. And we hold those politicians accountable uh, by voting them, voting the bums out, right? If we, if we don't like the policies they pass, we can have an election and uh, put in someone new. But by doing this by a rule from the Department of Labor, uh, we don't get to vote out the secretary of the Department of Labor. We don't get to hold someone accountable in the same way. And so uh, what the administration is doing is uh, attempting to influence these policies without going through the more public, transparent route of congressional lawmaking. Yeah, and nobody would nobody would sign off on it because necessarily you would engage in a bait, an actual debate, which we have not had in a long, long time because everything seems to be coming via executive decision or executive agency rulemaking and sometimes not even rulemaking um, in, the, in, in, in the case of this particular rule to the Department of Labor was it promulgated correctly did I mean because I didn't have a chance to say hell no did it matter even if it were that people would have weighed in on this do they even take comments under consideration as they're supposed to when they're supposed to put a rule forth and they're supposed to advertise and when 140 million Americans are going to see their retirement funds gutted, seems to me they would have had an awful lot of comments had they done this correctly. Well, in fact, Vicki, they did. Uh, this was uh, first proposed as a rule back in 2021, and they received, uh, I believe, over 22,000 comments uh, to the rule. And so it was over a year before the agency came back and promulgated the rule. Uh, but that doesn't actually make the rule right. They may have followed some of the uh, statutory procedures that they were supposed to do to make the rule, but that doesn't make the substance of the law any less unlawful. Well, the, the simple uh, fact yeah. is if 22,000 people weighed in on that and most of them were retirement uh, fund holders, then most of those comments were hell no. And so why would you continue to move forward with comments on a rule? Have we had a chance to see all the comments on the rule? Uh, all the comments are public. Uh, you can go to the Department of Labor's website and, and see them. Uh, but, of course, when the department promulgates the rule, they aren't required to necessarily take into account every single comment that is made. They don't have to agree with every comment that is made. And so the, the fact that a number of folks did uh, oppose the rule uh, doesn't prevent them from right. promulgating the rule. And it doesn't, uh, again, change the underlying unlawfulness of uh the separation of powers issue where Congress is supposed to make these sorts of policy decisions and not Truly. the Department of Labor. The yeah. Secretary of Labor does not make environmental policy in this country. Well, the Secretary of Labor, if nobody challenges him, does make policy, retirement policy in the country. And that's the problem. Is every time something like this happens, we have to we have to hope someone sues on our behalf. And in this case, it was a couple of retirees' behalfs. Uh, and, you know, some other groups, no doubt, are going to join in as well. Um, when do you expect to have a decision on whether or not this rule is enjoined? Well, we will be filing our briefing on that very soon. Uh, as I mentioned, we just filed our lawsuit this morning. Uh, I anticipate that we'll be filing uh, the motion for injunctive relief in the coming week or so, and then we'll see how quickly we can get on the court's calendar. And we're talking about in, in Wisconsin, since it's filed in Wisconsin the 7th. Uh, that's, well, that's correct, Vicki. We'll start with the Eastern District of Wisconsin and attempt to get a ruling uh, there. Oh, I hope you do. It likely winds up in a, in a relatively decent federal court. Thanks so much for coming on the program. I appreciate it. 
Thank you so much for having me, Vicki. It was a pleasure being here. And go on uh, Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty's website, which is will, W-I-L-L-Law.org.